set for his glory. A people that has been prepared, set apart from the foundations of the world. They will go forth in power. They will go forth marching on, moving on from one level of revelation of his glory into another level of the revelation of his glory. For yet the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth, the whole earth, from the top to the bottom, from the right to the left, all around. Just as the waters cover the sea. And the people of the law. Will find themselves swimming. In the abundance of many waters. <laughs> A river. Yes. Too deep. Ooh. Too Shallow to swim in. But the strength that comes from on high will carry you. It will strengthen you. He will give you the strength. He will teach you those things that you have not known yet. Those things that you are seeking for, those things that you are yearning for, those things that you are longing for, he will show you those things as you swim in the rivers of many waters. For the glory of the Lord shall rest upon you, to give you his peace, to give you his shalom, to cause you to do extraordinary things. Things that men had called impossible shall be possible to you. So arise, go in the strength of the Lord. Go in his mind. Go in his presence. For the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. To give you strength this day. All has been prepared. All has been made ready for you. So go and rejoice as you go in his presence. Heal the sick, set the captives free, save those who are lost. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. I bless you, O Lord, this day. I worship you, O Lord, for that. I adore you for it this day. In the name. Holy Spirit, rest upon us. Fill us up, O Lord, with your holy presence. Fill your people, O Lord, with your anointing and with your power to do the things that you have called them to do, the things that you have showed unto them. I thank you. Jesus, Jesus, there 
is something about that name, Master. Like the rainbow after the rain, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let Of this war will pass away, but there is something eternal about the name. Greetings to you in the name of Jesus. My heart is so filled of joy this day. For what the Spirit of the Lord is bringing to come to pass in the nations. I'm seeing people rising up into a new level of faith in God. A people that have been prepared by the Spirit of the Lord. With all of these lockdowns, restrictions <laughs> that the coronavirus has brought onto the world. But yet the Lord is bringing forth heart of the debris of the nations out of the ashes and the bones of those who have died of the coronavirus is there itself. A new people springing forth with power. A new army of the Lord filled with the power of his Holy Ghost to declare the glory of the Lord with miracles, signs, and wonders because now even right now is the time for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God right now are you included have you been ready <laughs> God is waiting on you you think you are waiting on God He's been waiting on you more than 2,000 years ago. <laughs> what are you waiting for? It's time. This is the time. This is the season. This is the time. So get out of your rocking chair. Get out of those, that rocking chair. It's going to make your bones to get rotten. Switch off the television. Shut your heart away from all those garbage, the nonsense going on in the Lord. Turn in into the heavenly challenge. The heavenly radio channel from God, from heaven, from above. God has words to speak to you. He has a message for you. And I 
are going to deliver that message right now. And he has a wall to speak through you to the nations. It's time. It's time to go forth in his power. And it's time to go forth with his strength. Hallelujah. The time has come. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you have your Bible, please, let's go to Mark chapter 9. Towards the end of that chapter, the last two verses, Jesus made some very powerful statements that affects your life right now. With all of the restrictions, lockdown, there's a second wave of the coronavirus going on all over the world right now, and many more people are getting infected, but thank God, the mortality rate is going down, but listen, they are putting restrictions. They are putting things down. In many of the countries that have been seen, especially across the United States of America today, it's like some of these governmental restrictions has been targeted against the Christians against the gathering of the people of God, deliberately, deliberately, they are doing it. <laughs> Will you be, have believed that? That they, in the most, the freest nation in the world, where we esteem religious liberty, where we, we talk about religious freedom, of worship freedom, of expression freedom, of religion, to worship God. There are some powers that have chosen on their own to target religious liberty and restrict The gatherings of believers. I'm not saying in the state of Texas here is going on. Our governor here in the state of Texas has been so marvelous. He, he has not labored worship of God as as uh, as uh, as uh, a non-essential. So Christians are afraid to. Uh, to worship God, but there are some who are using it as a weapon. They've weaponized the instrument that the devil has given into their hands to target Christians, the people of God. But we don't pay attention to that as the people of God. You don't pay attention to it. Even if there's some restrictions in your nation, in your country, all across Europe right now, there are, there are lockdowns in many, many of the countries. Great Britain is going to be locked out for more than a month right now. Because of this. But let's look at what Jesus said in Mark chapter 9. Verses 49 and 50. He said, for everyone will be seasoned, everyone will be seasoned with fire. <laughs> everyone will be seasoned with fire. What is he talking about there? The fire of the trials of, of your tribulations, of the of, of, of persecution of uh, of of, of, of uh, you will be seasoned with it. If there is no fire, if there is no persecution to your faith, of your faith, then you do not have life in your testimony.
Because with the fire, you are prone by the Spirit of God to produce life. And the life that you produce is the life that saves the lost, is the life that heals the sick, is the life that casts out demons. Is the life that delivers those who have been held captives. Everyone, Jesus said, every Christian. <laughs> you know, when Jesus called us into the, into the kingdom, uh, with religion has taught people that it's going to be all rosy, all beautiful. But here, Jesus said, everyone will be seasoned with fire. Hallelujah. The seasoning with fire is going and the, 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 the amount of seasoning that you are able to take in your life as a Christian is going to determine the level that you are able to rise above in your particular situation in that calling of God where you are running right now, where you are operating right now. If you are able to stand firm, if you are able to stand on boldly, if you are able to Keep on in the midst of the persecution, in the midst of the pressures that they brought upon you concerning the ministry, the calling of God over your life to do what God has called you to do. If you are able to keep on boldly declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord, the more of the word that is coming out of your mouth will determine the amount of the anointing that is going to be poured out into your life, into your ministry, into your destiny with God. Mm. That's why Jesus said everyone <laughs> will be seasoned with salt, with fire. And, and, and I've had some fire in my life as a Christian. I can tell you so many fires. I've been through some stuff. I've been through some fire. This man saying these has went through some tribulations. And I have seen the miraculous hand of the Lord delivering me from all kinds of situations. Uh, I've been delivered from the hands of the mafia in Russia. I've been delivered from the hands of those who wanted to kill me in Estonia. Cut my body literally into little pieces. They wrote about it in the newspaper. They talked about it on the television. We're going to cut that black man into little pieces of meat, put his meat into a trash bag, and throw him in the back of of a container. But look at this same man still preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ today right now. Jesus said, everyone will be seasoned with fire. If you are afraid of a persecution, you are not a Christian. Then you have not been called into the kingdom of God. That's why I said earlier on that there are some people who are just sitting down in their rocking chair. All they do with the testimony of Jesus is to gossip about it. They don't share it with the demonstration of the power of the kingdom of God. So instead of Instead of them being seasoning with fire, they have become not just lukewarm, they become cold. They become frozen up with the testimony of Jesus in their life. They can't really do anything for God. Oh, but they can do a lot of things for the world. They love the world more than they love Jesus. You remember the story of Martha and Mary in the Bible? Martha and Mary, Jesus loved both of them. <laughs> but Martha was so concerned about taking care of the kitchen stuff. 
She was taking care of the worldly stuff, things that doesn't matter into the kingdom of God. But Mary, what was Mary doing? Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. There are so many believers today running around. Oh, they got fire, they fire. They don't got no fire in them. The only fire you get that will deliver the sick, that will save the lost, and that will heal comes from the presence of Jesus. And that was where Mary was seated in, seated at, at the feet of Jesus. At the feet of Jesus, she was receiving the word of life. Her life was being seasoned with fire. Martha was busy in the kitchen cooking food, taking care of, oh, I've got to take care of the pastor, I've got to take care of these, taking care of the worldly stuff. I've got Jesus in my house. But without a heart devotion to the word of Jesus. So Martha cannot fully follow the word of Jesus because in the first instance she never even listened to him. And there are so many martyrs in the body of Christ today. So many martyrs running around. Without a fire from the presence of Jesus in their lives. They are dead and they are frozen. They think they have life. <laughs> but the life they have is of the world. The manifestation of the works of the flesh. Matthew, Jesus loved both Martha and Mary. Everyone! Martha and Mary will be seasoned with fire. <laughs> Even the one that is in the world and the one that is at the feet of Jesus will both be seasoned with fire. It's how we react to what the fire of God is doing in our life that is going to determine our destiny in life. Jesus never said you're going to have a rosy, rosy Christian life. Listen to what he says right here. He said, and every sacrifice that you are making for the propagation of the gospel will be seasoned with salt. Oh my God. The seeds that you are sowing into the kingdom of God are not only the, the money, <laughs> the material things, or the, or the time, or, 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 or the amount of prayers that you are sowing will be seasoned. It will determine the quality of the anointing over your life. That's why the moment you are spending, you've been spending this time with the lockdown and the restrictions from the coronavirus matters a lot as a Christian. How have you been spending your time? Are you being seasoned with salt? Are you being seasoned with fire? Or you seasoning yourself with all kinds of garbage, all kinds of nonsense that the world has to give. 
persecution will come. Now, listen to this. In verse 50, Jesus said there, salt is good. But if the salt loses its flavor, <laughs> how will you season it? It's impossible. You just throw it away if it doesn't have flavor. Ah! May you never lose your flavor in the name of Jesus. May your life continue to be seasoned with fire and fire in the name of Jesus. Because the more fire you are getting from the presence of Jesus, the more of his glory is coming to rest upon you, the more of his power is coming to rest upon you, and the more of his anointing is going to rest upon you. You remember the story of Elisha when Elijah was about to be taken up to the heavens? Elisha said, <laughs> Elijah asked Elisha, what do you want me to do, do for you? He said, all I want is a double portion. He didn't say of your character. He didn't say of your personality. He didn't ask for anything else apart from the double portion of the anointing. He wants the anointing, not the character of the man of God. Because Elisha recognized something is different from Elijah. And their ministries, if you study both of them very well, they were different in the ways that they walk in that anointing. Elijah got translated with that anointing. Elisha got translated on the sick bed with that anointing. It went to heaven. But the anointing never lost, left his body. Because the Bible said after he was even buried with his dead bones, they threw some dead bodies into his grave and the dead body rose again from the, from the dead after he touched the the dead bones of Elisha. That tells you how powerful the anointing on the man could be. God will never give you something you will never be able to carry. <laughs> if he knows you are not ready to carry it, he's going to prepare you for it. And the time of preparation with this coronavirus restrictions and lockdown is bringing forth something new in your life, something powerful in your, to your congregation, into your church. You are not the same person that started in the midst of all of this. You are going higher. Listen, salt is good, but if the salt is loses its favor, how will you season it? Have salt in yourself and have peace with one another. What does it mean to have salt in yourself? It's talking about life. Salt is basically life. It's what is symbolized. Salt is life. And Jesus said, you are the salt of the world. Why do you need salt? Because when the fire comes, when the persecution comes, when they are 
talking bad about you Christians when they are looking, the world is looking down on you. Guess what? The life of Christ that is seasoned on the inside of you will bring healing, salvation, deliverance into the world around you. In Luke chapter 13, Jesus, you will not believe it, but Jesus faced persecution also. And uh, it is very, very important for us as believers to understand and see, learn from the example of Jesus how he responded in the face of opposition. Because Jesus never succumbed to opposition. He never bowed to a oh, they're opposing me here. I'm going to bow down. And just, no. He never did that. In Luke chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 31. The Bible says, on that very day, some Pharisees came saying to him, Get out! Depart from here! For Herod wants to kill you. Ho ho! Herod wants to kill Jesus. That's opposition right there. That's persecution right there. The Herodians of today in our world, the Herods with the political powers, the Herods with the governmental powers want to silence Christians. They want them to shut up their mouth, not to share their testimony. That's what Herod is all about. It's the spirit of Herod. He wanted to kill Jesus. When, who are the people that Eros sent to give the message to Jesus? Religious people. <laughs> who? Your fellow Christians. Believers. In the hope of Israel just like Jesus. They were the ones who became the messengers of the devil, of the enemy to Jesus. So how did, what did Jesus do when he had that? Because it's a very, very important for us to, to learn what we tell, tolerate into our lives as Christians. How you react to the threats of opposition matters a lot. If you bend, you're going to bow. But if you confront opposition to the testimony of Jesus in your life, you're going to speak life into your society. You're going to see signs, miracle signs and wonders all around you. Jesus said, in verse 32, and he said to them, Go tell that fox. You could see Jesus didn't refer to, to Herod as King Herod. He said, tell that fox. What's the fox? He said, the animal that scatters. In our world today, if Jesus has referred to the Herod of our societies today as a fox, the world would have crucified him. He's calling him by name. Why are you referring to him as a fox? But Jesus never mixed words when he called him fox because he knew exactly that was who Herod was. 
And that's exactly who the Herodians of today in our world are today. Those who use political powers to persecute Christians, they are all foxes. What they do is to create confusion and scatter division among Christians. That's what a fox does. The spirit of a fox. Jesus said, go tell that fox. Behold. He didn't say, oh, I'm not afraid of you. He said, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow. And the third day I shall be perfected. Hallelujah. Jesus never said, oh, he's good. he said, no, you can't stop me, Herod. I'm going to continue heal the sick. I'm going to continue casting out demons. I'm going to continue to be a testimony of Jesus. I'm not going to listen to all of your nonsense. Uh, I have an assignment from God the Father to fulfill and that's what I'm focusing on. That's what I'm working towards. That's what I'm going to fulfill. And he said, nevertheless, I must journey today and tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. For it cannot be that a prophet should perish outside of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! That's a man who is, who is seasoned with fire and whose fire is going to season you. Jesus was unstoppable. He faced the devil head on. He said, Herod, bring it on. <laughs> I'm coming after you. <laughs> and when we finally reached Jerusalem, Herod was waiting for him. He appeared before Herod. Herod couldn't do anything to him. That's what they do. They only intimidate. He sent Jesus back to Pilate. That's exactly what he did. He was looking to see him perform miracles. Jesus never even paid attention to Herod. After getting, he arrived at Jerusalem. In fact, Pilate said, I don't know what to do with him. I will just let him go. But the religious people said, no, 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 release Barnabas to us. This man must die. Hallelujah. So your life is going to be seasoned with fire. How do you confront the persecution that is, and the restrictions that is coming across your pathway? Jesus said again in Luke chapter 21 and in verse 9, 17. He said, And you be hated by all for my name's sake. But not a hair of your head will be lost in the midst of the fire, in the midst of persecution. You're going to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego coming out of the fire unharmed. Hallelujah. They threw you in the fire, but the fire never burned you. <laughs> but the fire of the Holy Ghost keeps walking miracle signs and wonder in you. The more the world is putting their pressure on you, the more God's power is being pushed into your life. As you make this decision, listen here, in verse 19 here, verse chapter Luke 21, 
by your patience possess your soul. This translation says the the passion, uh, the the passion translation of the Bible. I, I love the way it says it. It says something like by standing firm with patience, you will possess your soul. By standing firm in the midst of the persecution, by standing firm in the face of opposition, how do you stand firm? You stand firm the same way. Jesus faced the opposition, the threat from Herod. It is, oh, they're coming to capture me. They're coming to arrest me. Hey, I've got to, oh, I need to get a lawyer. Oh, I need to. No, Jesus said, Shut up, Aaron. <laughs> Sometimes you need to learn how to laugh at the devil. Throw your best shot. We're not afraid. We can't be stopped. Nothing can stop the testimony of Jesus. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus healing the sick, setting the captives free. The testimony of Jesus saving the lost is the spirit of prophecy over the United States of America. That's our salvation. As a nation. When we testify about Jesus. So Herod can shut. Make Christians to shut up. We refuse to. Let him silence out. We've chosen to testify. And we will continue to testify. Because we know. There is deliverance. There is healing. There is salvation. All over the land by the Spirit of Jesus. The devil knows when he's able to silence Jesus, Christians, he will have a free day. You will be able to kill people with marijuana, drugs all over the street, family, units, homes breaking up here and there. Children who are disobedient to their parents. Everybody living a lifestyle just to please themselves. They don't have control over their own bodies anymore. And iniquity, where iniquity is spreading up and down. That's, that's the kind of society, the world that the devil is looking for. But when we testify about what Jesus does, <laughs> we stop the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the devil can't stop you except you allow him to stop you. He couldn't stop the holy disciples. Peter and John were locked up in the jail. But the testimony of Jesus could not be locked up. Even as Paul said, said in his chains, he said, The word of God is never in bond. I'm still free <laughs> to proclaim the word of Jesus. They were stoning Stephen to death. Even as that man was leaning down right in the presence of those who are stoning him. The Bible says the glory of the Lord was shining all over him. And he spoke words. He said, I see Jesus seated in the heavens.
heavens. He saw the heavens open up, receiving a soul. Wow, that's a glorious way to meet Jesus. Because I don't think Stephen even felt all the pain from the stones that was they were throwing at him. He didn't feel it. You can't feel anything that the world is throwing at you when the glory of the Lord is all over you. That's what the glory is there for. <laughs> so that you don't pay attention to all of those things. So that you don't be like Peter, when Jesus asked him to walk in the supernatural, walk on the water. As soon as he saw the storms of life, he saw the persecution, boom, 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 from the world coming. He said, oh, I'm going to sink. And what did Jesus say? Oh, you are flipped to faith. Why did you doubt? Your faith needs to be seasoned with fire. And that's what Jesus is expecting of us today as children of God. With testifying about Jesus, we don't yield. You can't be sitting down on that rocking chair waiting, oh, until the Lord tells you something. No, he already spoke. Get up, preach the gospel. This is the time to stand up, map out your day. How many homes, how many families you're going to knock on their doors, even though they have restriction? You can still knock on people's doors. Pray for the sick. Hallelujah. Go out looking for those who are sick in your neighborhood. Go out looking for those who are ready to hear the gospel. They're going to listen to you. I tell you the truth. With the restrictions going on right now, people will listen to you. Several times I've traveled, or preached on buses, on trains, even on the aeroplane. That's an environment where people are restricted. They have no choice but to listen. And I've, I've had people receive Jesus on the plane. I've had people on the train traveling with me receiving Jesus. And in the midst of it, on the way to Siberia, to Krasnodar, I still remember that occasion. A mafia man came, pointed a shotgun on my head. Said, I'm going to kill you and throw your dead body out of this train right now. Why? Because I was... I led his wife or his girlfriend, whatsoever she, whosoever she was, to the Lord on the train. So why did you have to go to my girl and give her all this propaganda? But as it led me into that bathroom on the train, Pointed a gun at me on my head. Oh, something happened all of a sudden. The gun dropped from his hand into the party in the toilet there and boom, went out of the train. The only thing I saw was this mafia guy holding his ear, oh, as if he was hearing some loud noise. That was how I escaped from his hand. The next day, he came to me to repent. He said he has never seen something like that before. The angels of the Lord protected me at that time. <laughs> he said, I was getting ready to shoot you. But I had this loud noise all of a sudden. I couldn't fire a shot. My ears was blowing out. I had to stop him. That was how the gun, he lost his gun. He said he knew that God was the one 
who deliver. He never knew about that before. He invited me to his town. Today there is a Pentecost church over there in that town that was started. And just two weeks ago, uh, our pastor in, uh, in Siberia, Pastor Elia, sent me a picture of the pastor in that church today. That was started by this mafia guy. He put his money to rent the, the location for us. He bought all the musical equipment for the pastor that was there. I was so surprised. God changed his life just like that. Just as he changed the life of Saul on the road to Damascus. That mafia man had a Damascus experience that transformed his life. But if I had decided not to go testify, witness to his wife, to, or to his girlfriend, whosoever she was at that time, or testify to people on the train, if I was not going out looking for people to be healed, do you think the supernatural encounter that happened on that occasion that opened the door for the gospel to be preached in that city would have happened. No, it wouldn't have happened. That's why you don't allow the restrictions by the government and the, all the Herodians to hold you back, to hold down your, bow down your testimony of Jesus. That's why you've got to let the fire of God burn in you. Get up, get out. Heal the sick. Cast the demons out. Deliver those who are lost. Rescue the perishing. In the name of Jesus, bring them to the glory of the risen Christ. Let them know that your Jesus is alive, is not dead. Hallelujah. I've got so many things I want to share with you, but I'm just going to rest it here today right now. But I want to encourage you. The Lord gave a prophecy at the beginning of this video clip, but before.